Welcome to Being a Parent, a series of short videos with strategies to help make family life less stressful. My name's Joshua Harwood. My name's Danielle Cumming. And you'll also hear from some of our amazing parent group leaders who have tried and tested the strategies in their own homes. This video is about reflective listening, a parenting super skill. Okay, so next we're going to be um, watching some demonstrations from our parent group leaders and they're going to be um, giving examples of different styles of listening. Susan will not play with me. Why not? She said I was stupid. Well, you are stupid if you believe her. Find another friend. There's lots of people you can play with. You should know how to make friends now you're six. When I was your age, I had hundreds of friends. But no one... Look, just go out into the playground and ask someone to play with you. It's not difficult. Susan will not play with me. Oh, you poor thing. Come and tell me about it. Susan said I was bossy and that I always told her what to do, that she, and she didn't like that. Well, that's horrible. She should not be so mean. I know. I will ring up my friend Caneb and you can play with her daughter, Rena. Yes, but... Don't worry, I will sort it out. <laughs> yes, Mum, but... Better if you don't play with Susan. She's not very nice, is she? Susan will not play with me. Oh no. Do you want a sandwich? Should we go bowling? What about going to the park? You look really nice in white. Yes, but... No, don't worry. We'll go to the park in a minute. <sighs> Susan will not play with me. Oh, you poor thing. How awful for you. Yeah, she said I was bossy. No, you are never bossy. You have the nicest temperament and you would never be bossy. Yes, Mum, but... Now don't say another word. I think you are not bossy at all. But she still will not play with me. Don't worry. You are lovely and everybody will want to be your best friend. Susan will not play with me. Oh, that must have made you sad. Yeah, she said I was bossy. She said you were bossy? Yeah, she said I always had to organise the game. So she thought that you always had to be in control? Yes, and she said that she wanted to be the dragon. Oh, she wanted to be the dragon. Yes, because we always play brilliant games. Sounds like you have great games together. Yes, but she does not like me bossing her around, Mum. Sounds like Susan also has strong opinions about your games. Yes, but I like playing with her. You think it's fun to play with her, even though she sometimes likes to be in charge as well? Yes, maybe it's more fun to play with Susan because she also likes fun games. It sounds like you're a good team. Yeah, I will see if I can take turns to be in charge next time. So in the last video, I think it was quite um, clear that the listener was feeding back the gist of what the speaker was saying. Um, mm. There was the underlying feelings were being spoken about. They were paraphrasing the content and they were also using those open questions to kind of lead the speaker to speak more. Um, and they reflected on those keywords that the speaker was using. Mm. Yeah. So what is the purpose of that kind of communication? So this specific type of um, listening style is actually a skill that we can use and it's called reflective listening. Generally, the purpose of using reflective listening is so that um, the speaker is able to come down from being emotionally flooded. 
So sometimes when, for example, we're feeling really upset, our emotions can really overwhelm us. And as you can see in the circle, we've got usually our, think, our thoughts and our feelings are quite balanced and we're able to think clearly about things, we're able to take logical decisions, that kind of thing. However, if something happens that triggers our emotions and we become really upset, those emotions or that feeling part of our brain is going to flood <laughs> all of our um, thinking. And that only leaves a small part of us to be able to think logically about the situations that we're facing. So that can be really hard. And if you haven't had that opportunity to um, express how you're feeling and to hear back what your thoughts are, you can almost get trapped in that emotional state and you can just go on being stressed or upset or angry or whatever it is, whatever the emotion is, it can be really difficult to come away from that. So by using reflective listening, you're allowing the speaker to make sense of the situation that they're in and gradually their emotions are going to come down and they're going to start to think more clearly. Um, but the point, the really important point is that we're not ever going to advise the speaker of what to do. Um, we really need to help them to kind of come to their own solution for themselves. So we're just paraphrasing what they're saying. We're repeating it back so that that process of them saying their thoughts out loud and them hearing it back, that's going to help them to understand things so much more. When our children are feeling very stressed and very upset, they're just not going to be listening to you. You're not going to be able to get through to them. So try and bring the emotion down by doing some reflective listening so they can start to process it and then they can start to listen. For me, reflective listening was my biggest personal um, eye opener. It was something before this being a parent course, I'd never really been aware of it. I didn't really know it was a thing with a name. And um, I found it quite enlightening and something I've had to work quite hard to A, get my head round and B, start trying to use those techniques and realizing it really does make a difference. It's not about how I feel about what they're saying. It's about what they feel about what they're saying. And so therefore, reflective listening is something I think is incredibly important. My eldest at bedtime, um, and, I, and I think she's scared, of, she's scared of going to sleep at night time. She's scared. She reads a lot of books with a lot of ideas and they run through her head, I think. And she's scared of bedtimes and being in the room on her own. Um, she likes to she likes her sister to be in the same room um, but sometimes just listening to what she's saying and you don't have to come up with an answer um, but she'll tell you I'm, I'm worried about this or I'm worried about that and just repeating that's what you're worried about or that makes sense we've tried night lights we've tried music we've tried um, a little bit of mindfulness to help her go to sleep but I actually think in at the end of the day just validating what she's saying and saying that's okay um, and I am listening to you has had more of a positive effect than, than putting or leaving the light on or anything like that because it makes her feel more confident in herself. So I think with reflective listening it really makes the person who is talking to you feel like they're being listened to, feel like they have ownership over the problem and it empowers them to actually solve the problem themselves and instead of feeling like a victim or like they're not being listened to, they actually have a much more positive experience. If there's a problem with a child that my daughter's playing with, quite often um, I will ask questions like, tell me about what happened, I can see that you're unhappy, how could we fix this? And quite often she will actually be able to talk herself down to it so that she's calmer and she can come up with an idea that she's happy with and she actually is much more likely to move on and deal with the situation. I think it gives her a lot of lifelong skills that will help her later on to you know, solve mm. problems for herself. The last time she said something that was really sad. So when we go back to school, can I hug? X and I was like, oh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And 
How about Miss? Can I have Miss? I, I, I just don't know what to say because I don't know what the situation will be when they go back. So I'm, I'm having to do a lot of reflective listening around um, emotions of missing school, missing friends, missing going to the park. Yeah. What I learned using reflective listening was to stop offering solutions. Your automatic response, or my automatic response, was to just be, well, we'll just sort this out. We'll just do this. We'll just do that. Just do that. Just don't talk to them anymore. They've annoyed you, you know, and, and just offering constant solutions. And I was just actually making it worse. I can remember getting into arguments when my son was upset. Then I'd try and help. Then I'd get upset because it's like, oh, don't, don't have a go at me. You know, you start shouting at me. And, you know, so all those things were going on. And then I learned about reflective listening and I was like it was totally changed it allowed him to be able to be upset to be angry to be frustrated without me imposing my own thoughts and feelings on him tune in to the child because they want to be they want to be heard I want you at home to go away and try this as soon as you can maybe with a family member or maybe with your child um, Give it a go. That's what we always encourage. Give this kind of reflective listening a go. Here's a reminder on the main things to remember when you're practicing reflective listening. Give your full attention. Feedback the gist. Try and get the underlying feelings. Remember those door openers to keep the conversation going. Things like, tell me more about that. Try not to ask questions. And if you have to, make sure they're open questions. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone. Bye. Okay, bye.